these books are out now. Uh, they came out on March 17th. Um, they are distributed by Penguin Random House, but I believe they might be from Camelot. Okay, so let's get started. Oh, the first one is Hazel and Twig, The Lost Egg by Brenna Burns Yu. And I, I really love uh, her art and her story. She mixes in some, I know it's from another one, she mixes in some Korean culture, but it's very subtle um, because the characters are animals. Um, but this one looks like it's more about um, discovering an egg. So that might be a great book for Easter or Passover. Um, they have sort of egg themed holidays. Yeah, and so like, for example, here, it's like you and Amma can do that, Hazel said. So Amma is a Korean word for, what is Amma? Is it mother? Amma? Appa Amma? Yeah, I think it's, oh, Appa Amma? Yeah, I think that is. Um, so I really like how it's uh, built in, but very subtle. Um, and it's not sort of the point of the story, it just happens to be. Um, you know, enriching the story. So the next one is called Seeds by Carm Carme Lemniscatus. It looks like it's nonfiction. Oh, look, it's a beautiful end paper. It reminds me of the Seed is Sleepy, kind of that kind of artwork. Um, and it's by Candlebook Studio. So I don't know if that is an imprint that is more nonfiction oriented. I'm not sure. Um, so it's like narrative nonfiction about seeds, which is, it's really, um, the illustrations are really, make it feel more of a narrative, um, fiction story. Oh. So here we have also a message of being a good friend. So yeah, it's definitely um, like a mixture where you learn about seeds, but then there's also a story. And that's, I think that's really great for drawing kids in. Oh, so Alba and the Ocean Cleanup by Laura Hawthorne. It's a story about saving our ocean. So this is perfect for Earth Day or really any time of the year because our oceans are definitely in trouble. But this also has that those really beautiful textured covers that I love that feel like, it feels like kind of like fabric almost. Um, so it's like a, it, it, this one is a smooth, I mean, it's, it, there's no like sort of embossed elements, um, but it definitely has that texture and it has a little bit of um, almost like gold leafing. So like the, a little bit of shininess. Um, and beautiful end papers and coral. Kind of an old-fashioned, reminds me of the ox cart man, like the, those buildings. Wow, what a beautiful coral reef. And then here you find trash. Um, and Alba, so there's a character here who perhaps... So here's a girl named Kaya, and she found Alba. Oh, Alba is a fish. Um, looks like a lionfish, maybe. So yeah, I think I think these kind of messages. Oh, and look, there's also sort of a um, seek and find elements. So yeah, this there's a lot going on in this book to make it really engaging for kids, um, and I think. The more we teach our kids about um, our environment and, you know, our need to save our oceans, the better. So I think that's great. Wow, what a great cover. Hike. I love it. By Pete Oswald. But, so it has the word hike and then it has all the different scenes. And it's um, rock climbing. So I had a daughter who likes to rock climb, but mostly doesn't. It did it in an indoor gym. But, um, hiking. So that, that is a, a great uh, message for now that we're all social distancing. But, um, but now that the warm weather is coming up, 
So this is looks like a mostly um, wordless picture book going on an adventurous hike that involves some traversing of steep hills, maybe even mountains. Um, yeah, that looks great. So it's a father and a child. They're going on a hike and there's going to be some challenges, but it's going to make the day super special. And, you know, it's not, he has a rope, but it isn't, it isn't too crazy. I had a college roommate, no, I had a roommate after college who um, scaled um, El Capitan. In, uh, and that is, that is quite a difficult climb. The Stars Just Up the Street by Sue Soltis, illustrated by Christine Danvier. Yeah. Um, and oh, the, um, the cover is matte, but the actual picture is shiny. I, I think, I just love how these covers, there's always, there's something very special about each one of these in this package. Um, so this is about uh, a girl who loves stars, um, and she wants to see stars, but you know what, guess what, there's too much light pollution. So this is also <laughs> perfect for Earth Day. Um, because it is true. You can't really see the stars unless you go somewhere that's more remote. And so she organizes, it seems like, her neighbors, her city, her town, into addressing the light pollution. I, I wonder if it's just for one day or permanently. But, um, yeah, looks like she succeeded. And maybe she's a future astronomer. But, you know... I'd be able to see the stars first. Okay, there's, I think, two more. This is a, a large one. A Ben of all trades, kind of like the Jack of all trades. But this story is about Benjamin Franklin. It is by Michael J. Rosen, illustrated by Matt Tavares. Um, yeah, Matt Tavares has beautiful illustrations. And this is great because it captures him realistically. Um as he was as a child. So for those who want to learn more about Benjamin Franklin, the great inventor and also really an important figure in the American Revolution, I haven't seen a lot of ben like what Benjamin Franklin was like. And you know, like not enough about his inventions either, other than like you hear a lot about the key on the kite. So this will kind of take us um, into a more in-depth look about his personality. Um, and I wonder, I mean, there must be end notes how the author researched and got all the information about young Franklin, but it's great that there, you know, there was information to be found about his youth. So, um, yeah, that looks great. Um, I'll add it to my American Revolution list. And the last book is Darwin's Rival. Let's see. So that is Alfred Russell Wallace and the Search for Evolution. It's by Christiane Dorian, illustrated by Harry Tennant. And again, <laughs> a beautiful cover. This one is embossed, so you can't see it, but I, the letters... Um, they're almost like pressed in, as is the butterfly is textured, and these lumps are embossed so they stick out. Um, and it's just this very clean, like there's a very clean, arresting cover, a very strong cover. And here the end papers are a map of this journey of Darwin's rival, which I've never heard of. Um, and it's it's actually a, like a pretty in-depth, um, with a lot of words, almost like a non-fiction chapter book, but there's plenty of illustrations. Um, definitely anyone interested in biology and evolution would like this book. So I think it would traverse uh, older kids in high school as well as um, middle school, but, um, but also looks like a really 
beautiful reading experience. So you have these spreads that don't have a ton of words. Um, and then you have more in depth of like sort of this um, Wallace's actual expedition and what he found. So for anyone studying Darwin or interested in Darwin, this looks like a important book to compare and contrast these two scientists. All right, thank you so much to Penguin Random House for sending me these books and to Kennewick Press who made these beautiful books. And again, all these books are out now, March 17th, and um, thank you so much for watching.